Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest from the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Now here's our host, David Ham. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham right here on 550 AM and 92.9 FM. The Ham I Am on YouTube and Racing Roots with Ham on Facebook. And it's been a uh, lovely, beautiful evening. Uh, lots of sunshine. Just kidding. Actually, the bottom just fell out of the sky, but we're all safe and sound and dry in here. And uh, Corey came in a little bit early. Thank goodness you missed all that rain. And uh, we got Phil Cavalli over here, but we got Corey Stott is our guest for the evening. Yes, I it's, got it's Corey been, Stott, the son of the legendary Remo Stott. That's right. Cup Series driver. And the crew chief, our uh, former yeah, crew Corey chief. Corey himself is a crew chief. and crew, yeah. He's done, done everything, USAC racing, ARCA racing, everything. Yeah. yeah Only we, team owner, yeah. Xfinity Series. I tried a little bit of everything through the years mm -hmm. of uh, racing there, for yeah. sure. Yeah, very good. Well, it's great <laughs> to see you, man. I haven't seen you in probably 20 years. Probably, yeah. It's been a long time. Maybe 22, 21. Yeah. Yeah, you were a lot, a lot faster than I was back then, you know, when you were being the jack man. And, yeah, and, I uh, had uh, longer legs. Longer legs? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, we'll that. I, I always had, uh, well, I had Jeff Clark on here a couple of times. You know Jeff Clark, who was Absolutely. the guy I kind of modeled myself after trying to be like him as a jack man. And then he was like, well, you know, you were a lot faster than me. And I was like, well, thank you for that. I'll just <laughs> take it. <laughs> just take it, yeah. 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 Take that and run, sure. Yeah, sure. I saw my buddy Scott Travis and the beer man. He came over and picked up his camper, and he's headed to Martinsville, so hopefully he missed some of this rain this evening. He's going to go over and get set up for us. Uh -huh. And then we are headed to Martinsville coming up this next weekend. I feel this weekend, go up there. yeah, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Well, it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The beer man will be there, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, maybe I'll go up earlier. Well, I don't know. Hopefully the weather be great like it has been for the last couple of weekends. I know. Uh, Martinsville, suspect, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I looked at the weather a little while ago, and it's not that promising Thursday and Friday. But Saturday looks like it'll be 60 degrees and partly cloudy, and Sunday will be sunny and about 65. Oh, man, very good. Yeah. Well, you remember going to Martinsville and parking down in the hill and then <laughs> – or down the hill, <laughs> in down the, the, the pond. In the mud, yes, yeah, the, the pond. pond. They had a, well, the uh, geese. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know. I remember being there, and I still feel bad about this, but we had one of our teammates. They had, you know, we had two different vans that would go with the 40 car and the, uh, or maybe it's a 42 then. Yeah, 40 and 42. 40 and 42. Yeah. And, and so they, we just, I had to hightail it up the hill and kept on trucking and, and blend. And then I saw him out pushing, and I was thinking, man, <laughs> I probably should have stop but i couldn't stop you yeah. know what i mean if i'd have stopped exactly. on that hill yeah would have been in big trouble yeah That's getting it. in and out of there was uh like the old bristol days you know before mm -hmm. pre going into the infield when you mm -hmm. the, the the big deal back then was if you could drive your car out after a cup race mm -hmm. and load it in the trailer it actually ran had all four wheels where you could drive it outside that was like a victory oh <laughs> so yeah <laughs> good times yeah, yeah i can see that because you worked with uh, jeff gordon for a little while too i did actually when i first started and and uh when i moved to north carolina went to cup racing i worked on a school car for about six years before i went to uh Went to Hendrick Motorsports with, with the Gordon, Jackson so. Brothers. Yeah, with the Jackson right. Brothers. Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, yeah. Phil Parsons was our first driver, and then okay. we uh, we had Terry Labonte for a year, and then we had Rick. So Mast. were you with him when he won in May of '88 at Talladega? Absolutely, one of yeah. our one of our fondest yeah. memories. Because back then, you know, you didn't have a hundred man crew putting no. cars together. We built the cars, and there was like four of us. And that was almost like the second string car for that team too. yeah well i mean they were split yeah. uh at the time because uh harry's car was still through travis carter and okay and, uh, right right so okay, yeah sure, so we sure. had we had both uh richard and leo jackson doing yeah. ours uh and it was good times and we i, I remember and you'll appreciate this uh, as a motor man uh we were getting ready to go to talladega we got the motors the engines from uh the jackson brothers up in nashville and we got it the night before the race or the day before the day before we had to load up and go mm -hmm. and uh back then there were some you know, some rules you could get around mm -hmm. uh, you know like always yeah of course sure. so they they had worked really hard to make us a lot of power and they did a heck of a job but we got the engine at two o'clock in the afternoon or something and we tried to get that thing to shoehorn into that race car, and we could not make it work. Oh, 
We ended up cutting the cross member out of the car. Oh, wow. And we had, like, I called it the 55-gallon drum oil pan, mm -hmm. which they found a lot of speed in. But immediately after our, our race in Talladega, they changed the rules. You know, they came up with the Leo Jackson rule. So uh, we didn't get to do that anymore. But, yeah, stuff like that, you know. What year was that? That was 1988. 1988, yeah. Okay. 1988. Yeah. So May we, 8th. I remember because yeah. I was in jamaica with my first wife oh, well my man. wife yeah and um i had to reserve that the tv in the lounge for sunday i flew in and i wanted to make sure i was watching the nascar race and yeah. they said well if you you want to reserve it we'll put your name if it, there's an opening and nobody had reserved it from like one to four on sunday perfect yeah yeah well You're i was so the only nascar fan in 1988 <laughs> in jamaica at sandals Imagine people that. were pissed <laughs> but i enjoyed watching it oh uh, heck yeah. yeah yeah we had a you know, back then the breakaways were, you know, you'd get two or three cars or five cars. But on that particular day, uh, Jeff Bodine with the, the Henrik car was really the only car that could run with us. We, we got a long stretch and uh, ran well all day long. And, yeah. and luckily, lucky enough to put the, <laughs> put, put the race win in there. And that was my first victory lane cup. Uh, with, with Cup. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah. That was that. Uh, he was in the... The five car, the Levi Garrett, I guess. Yeah. Jeffrey Bodine. Jeffrey Bodine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But yeah. then you were with uh, Rick Mass was yours. What's uh, Glass Cox? Phil Parsons. Oh, yeah. Phil Parsons at the time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Phil at the time. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. And, and Scott worked with us over there. His father worked for Skull. Yeah. And uh, actually, <laughs> a couple of funny stories about Scott. You know, he came in and he was, uh, I think he was still in high school. And we took him to the racetrack, and we were trying to teach him some things. And uh, he pulled. He says, "I know how to pull that gear out." He was like a football player, you yeah. know, guy. He's like, "I know how to pull that gear out." And, and he had a uh, brand new skull jacket on, brand new. He rolls underneath there, and he pulls that gear out. And what you do, is set it right on his chest. Oh, oh. my gosh! So you know, that, cologne. Yeah, the cologne. That's yeah, a great stinks. smell. Hopefully, it wasn't uh, hot too, because it'll catch on fire. Well, he didn't catch anything on fire, and and he had enough horsepower. He could probably get another jacket. You yeah. know, most of us would be like, "Yeah, we're oh, yeah. out now." The rest of the year. Yeah, his dad was like the <laughs> U.S. Tobacco uh, right vice president or something. U.S. Tobacco, yeah. yeah. Sure enough, yeah, yeah. He's going to come on the show eventually. Oh yeah, he had to go do some work down in somewhere out of town. Yeah, <laughs> down yeah. south, I believe. I, it was. I stay in touch with him. Uh, yeah, he doesn't really live too far from me. So yeah, and then we caught up again when we were at uh, Sapco together. You, he, and I. Hmm. So uh, yeah, That's it was right. good times. Yeah, he was over in a, a cylinder head shop, and and at the time I was the jack man for Sterling. So that would have been 98 and 99 when you were there. Right, yeah. And then yeah. I hung on a little while in 2000. I got gotcha. you. I went and did some races for Sterling a few times. And then, uh, then you know, Ganassi bought out and then ended up moving along. Right. To Carl Wagner's. So uh, Dickie Dennis says they're about to get some rain up there. It's because he was uh, – it's headed that way. It's headed northeast right towards them. And I guess Scott's already made it to Martinsville, yeah. and it's raining there now. Yep, yep. And there's random epic. That's Tim. And oh, so okay. he's tuned in. Rachel Robbins Tim, and Charlotte. I, did you see what Tim said about the mural of Davy Allison that was painted on a gas station in his hometown or his town in Alabama? They painted over it white. That's sad. He says it's oh, kind yeah. of sad seeing the wall blank now. And Huey Town. Why did they do that? I don't know. I did not know. That's sacrilege. That. Yeah, we need, to, we need exactly. to have a protest. That's on a that. white crime. Yeah, that's like putting Messed something up. up at the pool yeah. hall in Georgia, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, you can't be doing yeah, stuff no. like that. Yeah, no. sure True. not. Actually, my wife's originally from Uey Town. Went yes. to oh, yeah. uh, wow. school at a young age with with Davy. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. How about that? Yeah. Very nice. You got any Davy Allison so. stories from back in school? You could come over and tell us. How about a Corey <laughs> Stott story? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There, there's probably a couple in the bank, you know. Yeah. Sure enough. Well, yeah. we might have to call her over here to talk about that argument. Oh, well, she <laughs> can <laughs> probably talk about a couple of things. Right. So it's been a while, you know. Allison, is that right, Allison? Allison, yeah. yes. All right, so if you're just now tuning in, we got Corey Stott in here with us and uh, Phil Cavalli's over here to my – and I'm Ham, of course, Ham with uh, Racing Roots with Ham. And he is the, the son of the legendary – Ramo Stott, and you, so you grew up in racing, but where did you, where were you born and raised? I was actually born in Keokuk, Iowa, and uh, my father actually won a race the day I was born. So, you know, wow. what what were the priorities at that point, I guess, you know, but that was a different time. So, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he was off, and I guess 
legend has it that he never saw me for like a couple of weeks because back then they'd run 50 or 60 races you know in, in a year and they'd run all those county fairs and yeah. and state fairs and whatever it was yeah. so yeah it was a good while before he ever got so he was got on a chance to see me he was on a stretch yeah yeah. Out racing. He's out trying to make some money to pay that uh, hospital bill, you know? Yeah. Yep. Sure. <laughs> so you were definitely born with a, a, what is it, valve off a Goodyear tire? Is uh, a... <laughs> yeah, something, something. I don't know. You, you know, I, and I hung around his race shop uh, from a very early age. So uh, once I got old enough, which was probably about 12 years old, 13, I went to work for him. And that was my first job, you know, and you learn how to sweep the floors and mm -hmm. Uh, back then we we had to uh take use bolts and kind of get them all situated and whatnot so yeah uh learned an awful lot from my father i miss him a lot yeah, yeah. i'm sure and you, yeah. you lost him recently yeah we lost him august 17th of this year yeah yeah, yeah sad yeah great so, guy spoke sat on the pole in the 1976 daytona 500 right yes sir yes sir and actually i was there for that race oh, were and you? you know the controversy there was there was a lot around that yeah. and uh he and some folks had gone out to eat and we were staying in a motor home at a park cl close by and i forget who it was but somebody from nascar came to that park looking for my dad and he wasn't there of course so he told us what was going on, and we all got pretty excited, of course, and we jumped in the car, and I, I was actually the first one to be able to tell my father that he was going to be on the pole for the Daytona 500. That was that was big. Oh, okay. Well, can yes, you sir. elaborate to the audience and me as to what the controversy was? I don't remember what it was, uh, engine size or something. 1976, uh, I, and forgive me if I get the drivers wrong, but there were three drivers in qualifying, uh, Daryl Darryl Waltrip, I believe A.J. Foy and Dave Marcus. I believe that's the three drivers. And they were all disqualified for oh. different reasons. Okay. So um, they didn't find out until quite a lot later. Uh, like I said, it was late in the evening before I was able to tell my father about it. But, uh, you know, that was that was neat. He had some good runs in Daytona. He had a third-place finish, a fifth-place finish. Uh, and when he ran NASCAR – um out of 34 races he had 17 top 10 so obviously when he came to town he was ready to go and roll yeah so yeah sure five top fives one pole yeah yep would, would you say that was his favorite track probably you know uh my father was really good on dirt racing buddy baker at one time had told me buddy was doing some testing for us at uh hendrick there after he'd kind of slowed down on his career, and he said, man, I'm going to tell you, I race against your dad on dirt. He was the best I ever raced against on dirt. So I thought that was a, an extremely high compliment from a guy like Buddy Baker. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, mm -hmm. and speaking of dirt up in Iowa, I guess, did you know the, the cringe you ever talked to? Uh, Keith Simmons. Cringe, yeah. I haven't seen him in several, several years. Uh you know, I, I think he still – he was promoting a racetrack out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or two or three, I right. think, you know, at one time. So, I don't know how, uh, you know, the pandemic's had a big hurt on just about everything, and I'm sure it's had an effect on promoting racetracks. Yeah, last time I heard it was like three tracks he had right, right there, which is right. very, very cool. That's right up his alley because he, uh, he was a racer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he, was, yeah, he had uh, – and I never knew him until we went to Sabco there, and he was a, he was my engine builder, mm -hmm, the, yeah. the main engine builder. And uh, he'd break out all these old pictures of my pop racing dirt up there in Iowa, and I'm like, where did you get all these pictures, you know? <laughs> so it was, it was great. Yeah. We, we'd reminisce on some of that stuff. I'm when sure. I started uh, at Sabco in, in 95, he was the head engine builder, and, you know, he left for a little while and then come back, but... He was a head engine builder that year, and then I remember going into the engine shop over there because I worked over in the machine shop, and then uh, Jerry Wendell was over there working, and he's like, hey, hey, what you up to? What are you, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm just doing what I do best, it's just messing around, whatever. And I was thinking, why did I just say that? You know, I was new <laughs> into the sport, you know. <laughs> right. Keith Simmons, but he was just always like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then he ended, up, uh, he ended up getting let go after 95. We had a lot of issues. Yeah. We had we had a lot of different things going on, and and not at a race team, man. Come on, in ninety five, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, some really bad things, like some things were, and it was just a it was a combination of different things that was going on. It wasn't really anything, I guess you could say, that was his fault in a way, but right. Um, and but we were blowing engines like 
like crazy for a little while there. Yeah. Anyway, he ended up getting let go. And then in 96, they brought in David Evans and, and Ronnie Phillips and some other guys. And then 97 brought Keith back. Oh, with, okay. With Sterling. Okay. Yeah. And I was happy to see him come back. Sure. I'll bet. Mm-hmm. I'll bet. Yeah. Cringe, you made some big power, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got to, got to make them live, which, you know, when I was there, they would live. Yeah. Uh, we had to feed them. We were a little tough on uh, fuel mileage, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, power was good. Yeah. So. Yeah. There was a lot of different things. It was electric. I mean, we could get into all that, but it wasn't, you know, yeah, he's getting into builder. So, sure. Yeah. All right, so then you got your um, you got you grew up in it, and you worked for Rick Mast and all. How did you end up going over? Was your next step over to Hendrix? Uh, you know, I guess back up just a little bit. You know, as, as soon as I, as soon as I got old enough to be able to drive a race car, yeah. I actually kind of drove a race car before I drove a street car. Mm-hmm. So it was a retired car that my dad had used, and uh, went out dirt racing one night and the first night i went out i i finished third in my heat race and fifth in the main and uh you know i was bit then so so the picture hmm. that i used as our thumbnail and i'm going to put it up here on the screen if you want to see it on the screen go to d ham i am on youtube and you can see it there that picture is of you and your dad and it's the only race you all race together no we actually race some some races together several races uh usac stock car racing in the midwest was very big Mm -hmm. uh you know there's an argument in the 60s and 70s whether it was bigger than nascar you know as big or whatever so uh my father raced a lot of usac and he was a usac champion in 1975 Hmm. uh that picture that you put up was 1980 uh it was my very first race against my father and it was a usac race he ended up winning the race (laughs) it was father's day my (laughs) grandfather was there Uh, i had some overheating problems but ended up finishing i think 14th but uh that was that was special for us it really was a great photo boy i tell you yeah, they can yeah, grab me up. Come on, you got to get this picture made with your pop over here. Yeah. I, I love that photo. I really <laughs> yes. do. Yeah. Photographers, you know. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, yeah. I feel uh, taking pictures is making memories. Yeah. Oh, I know. I love that, though. Yeah, so we we Gosh. did some USAC races. I did some USAC races there for a couple more years. And then, you know, finally came to the conclusion if I was going to be a part of racing, it was going to be hard to do out of the Midwest because most of your manufacturers are kind of backed out at that point, uh, late seventies, early eighties. So my wife and I decided to move to North Carolina and, and just give it a shot. Uh, Ronnie and Dick Hutcherson, obviously from my hometown mm-hmm. gave me some one ups on the shops to go to. And the first shop we went to was, uh, the skull car and I got a job there and I went home and she stayed back and packed everything up with the kids and the house and all the i left her with all the fun stuff you know <laughs> she was ready to kill me i think i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> but i went to work the next week and uh like i said i think worked six years there at the skull car with with uh started with phil had a few years there and then terry labani came in in 1990 and ran one year for us and then we had rick mast after that mm-hmm. about midway through 92 i uh moved over to Hendrick Motorsports when they started a team for Jeff Gordon. So, um, man, that was a challenge, you know, sure. building up new stuff and this and that. It was a challenge. There's a lot of things that were really good, uh, a lot of things that I wouldn't want to repeat to anybody. But Sure. <laughs> you know? I remember how small that shop yeah. was. Yeah, <laughs> and we had we had eight people in there. We had eight people in there building yeah. race cars, you know. Yeah, and Ray had an area when you came in, he had yellow tape where you couldn't yeah. – Unless yeah, you're you with stay the crew, there. you couldn't you come there. past yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. he, he wrecked a lot of cars there at the beginning, too. That first year, yeah. man, uh, we lost track about 18 clips, I think. Mm. You know, Jeff, wow. uh, he was going to the front, always mm. going to the front. You know, you could just tell a guy's going to win races, and he was definitely one of them. And even before I went to work there on that car, I, I had a desire to be able to work on Jeff Gordon's race cars because I had watched him in the open wheel cars and you know, pulling a wheel at Indy at IRP and stuff like that. So I knew he was going to do that. Um, and you're going to, it, it's like throwing a quarterback, uh, taking one out of college and throwing him into an NFL position. And we've got four or five of them this year. That's a tough position to be in. Mm-hmm. So a lot of expectations. Jeff was all obviously going to win races. Um, but you're going to go through that transition. He had to assimilate to that new transition, though. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. going to go through that transition. You know, and I remember at Bristol one night, and he was coming to the front all night long, but 
he'd tap this guy or tap that guy and i'm like man he ain't gonna make it through the night and uh, <laughs> he didn't <laughs> yeah that front <laughs> end only you can only hit your teeth so many yeah, times with a hammer. well and then pretty soon you make somebody mad and they help you knock yeah. the back end off too sure. yeah sure <laughs> yeah, right when you need them not to yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. exactly yeah i remember when so. he came along from the uh, 1990 or so watching him in that uh, baby ruth car right one. davis bill yeah. davis car yeah yeah and then then uh hendrick Got, somehow he ended up with him. Oh, that was a sour yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah that there was, was yeah. there was some heartaches over sure there. Sure, there was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Bill Davis is still mad about that. Probably. Pro- I don't blame Probably him. So. Kind of. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's like you're saying. It's almost like a stick and ball situation. Do you want to go with the Toledo Mud Hens? Do you want to go with the Yankees? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure enough. Yeah, no sure doubt. Enough. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and uh, just play a couple commercials. And if y'all have any questions, go ahead and throw them out here. Put a big Q in front of your question, and then Phil will get to those as soon as we get back. We'll be right back to Racing Roots with Ham. Mac Molding, the plastic molding, metal, and manufacturing. All right, we're back to Racing Roots with Ham right here on 550 AM, 92.9 FM. And you can also watch us on The Ham I Am on YouTube and Racing Roots with Ham on Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter as well. So we're streaming on all the different platforms. Got them all. Yeah, all that's over cool. the world yeah. right now. People oh. in Australia are saying, good day, mate. Good day. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> International Space Station that's, carries us live. There you go. That's right. Pipe they should. Yep. they got to have so, something good going on, right? <laughs> that's right. So you got to mention this. Um, we got our go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say we have our uh, our sponsors here. Great oh. RV Life is one of our sponsors. GR8 RV Life. If you'd like to rent an RV, you know, I don't know if they're going to be if they have one available to go to Martinsville or not. But if you would like to, if you want to go to Martinsville this weekend and you don't want to buy an RV but you want to go camp out, then yeah. yeah, go to Great RV Life. Actually, you can go to GreatRVLife.com now and on Facebook and Instagram and reserve your camper. And we also have Jersey Cape Yachts. Jersey Cape Yachts. <sighs> yes, custom yeah. yachts from what, 31 to? 31 foot all the way to 66 feet long. Mm-hmm. The custom yachts. They can even refab your yacht. Corey, I know you got a yacht. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. bring it on down there. We, and we uh, float around Lake Norman, see? Yeah. Yep. That's right. Just <laughs> give, I mean, yeah, that's all right. That'll work. <laughs> I mean, they can even take one of those, uh, probably take one of those RVs and 
plant it right on one of those yachts. Well, right? sh- I don't know. They're, that's right we're Rudy talking high end yacht stuff. They don't. <laughs> that's yeah. true. Yeah. Very nice. But they can be yeah. reached at 609-965-8650 or at jerseycapeyachts.com. Yeah. So I was talking about. I want to mention. I'm starting another YouTube channel as well, but it's going to be like doing some artifact hunting and all that kind of stuff. And I'm still trying to come up with a name. I'm almost stuck with the histories, mysteries, histories, mysteries, something like that. Yeah. Histories with the I E S because the history channel had one with a Y histories, mysteries. Yeah. So with ham or whatever. I always fell asleep watching that. So. And so, well, Hey, you don't yeah. like history, man. Digging for history with ham. Digging that's for it. history. That's good. Go. That's good. Yeah. All right. We're right like digging yeah. for history. Like digging deep. So I've been digging. telling He's everyone. He's writing it down. He's yeah. writing it down, Phil. You did good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've been telling everyone I'll send him a prize. I don't know if I'm going to have one for Phil. I'll bring you one to Martin's. No. There you I go. Got, I already have my prize. It's the <laughs> Iredell County keychain. That's, That's right. right. That's my prize. Everybody, exactly. and it's pink. That's yep. beautiful. You October. can't lose that. October. Oh, Every, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Aren't you aware of what I this am. I am aware. You're aware of what yes. this means, what this uh, color is. What's the awareness? The uh, breast one word, cancer. Thing, you only need to, yeah, yeah. Just, you don't have to say the C word, breast oh. cancer is okay. bad word. But yes, yeah. our uh, very it own uh, yeah. Sheriff Darren Campbell there, Ardell County it. Sheriff. So Don Clark says, hey, y'all, sorry I'm late. Well, I'm glad you joined us. She's on our Facebook page. And uh, who's uh, Lance Scott? Uh, Lance Stott. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Stott. I don't know why I say Scott. Yeah, that's uh, all right. Lance is his brother. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, so I told him he could call in if he wanted to. Anyway, he said, uh, Corey told me not to throw him under the bus. <laughs> okay, that must be why he's not. <laughs> yeah. But if you run out of things to talk about, my desk came about running – a two-man car with his brother. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was, was that like a, y'all were team owners? Oh, there you go. No, we were. <laughs> or two. He, he owned the car. Okay. He, uh, he and my cousin, I believe, owned the car. Great times. Great times. Yeah. They sure. went through a stretch. I don't think they have the series up there right now. But what they would do is take like a street stock jalopy kind of car, mm-hmm. and they would have mount two seats in there, and the driver would have... Uh, he, the steering wheel and the brake pedal. Yeah. And your passenger would have the gas pedal. I've heard of that before. So they had a good run. They won a lot of races. My pop got in there and drove it one night. I got uh, in there and drove it a couple of times. My brother won uh, some races with it. But we would laugh. We'd be laughing and slapping each other through the race, you know. <laughs> it was so much fun. Uh, oh, unbelievable. Man. That gives me ideas, man. There you go. That's like I, chain racing. I thought it was a great series, you know. Yeah. But, of course, it runs its time, and then it got to change up. But, yeah. Mm. Yeah, he almost killed me because I was like, you know, I wasn't going to hit the brake pedal, of course. Yeah. So, so we're in the middle of, of the corner on dirt track, three-eighths mile dirt track, and he's in the gas, and – I'm like, this thing is never going to turn. It was plowing like something. It was plowing a cornfield up there or something. Yeah. And I thought I was going into grandstands. And about the time I think this is never going to happen, it mm-hmm. would turn. So, oh, okay. so he knew what we had. What if no, he wouldn't ever bat, burp the pedal. Man. No. He wasn't getting out. We were going in the wall. didn't tap up. the brake either. No, no, no. So what if you had to put it in reverse? Or, you know, because sometimes can't be putting a car in reverse <laughs> during a race, Ham. Come on. <laughs> well, you never know. It that's a demolition a, derby, bud. I say, we did into, that too. Yeah, that's what, that's what I had on my mind. That's what, there you go. See, because my mind's already going. What can I do with this right yeah. here? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scott Felthausen tuned in. He says, Indy, Indy Hammer Jones. <laughs> Indy Hammer. Indy Hammer Jones. I kind of yeah. like that too. Yeah. Because yeah. I do wear that archaeology hat, is what I call it. Oh, that's yep. you, man. Uh, and he said, random, he says, Tim says, Kind of like the double stack demo derby races. Neat. That must be what I had in my mind. Yeah. Well, like Phil was talking about, you know, the ones that pull the campers and boat trailers yeah. and all that stuff. You know, that's or cool. They, Figure eight racing. Yeah, uh, oh. Boom and Gray. They have Bowman chain Gray. racing where yeah. the two cars are chained together with one chain in the middle and the front car's got an engine and the rear car's got the brakes. Right. <laughs> Wasn't it Saugus back in the day? They had three cars. Where the center one didn't do anything, I don't think. Wow. That's oh, hold on. Saga Speedway, back <laughs> when they first started the truck racing series. Oh, wow. I wasn't there for that one, but I, I remember watching it on TV. Yeah. It, was, it was big fun just to watch. Yeah, we, ha- we have a few questions here. Please have uh, Steve Knight, he's saying. You remember Steve Knight? Yeah. He says, please have Corey mention all the really great drivers from... Kia Cook. Kia yeah, Cook. Thank you. There you Can't go. Can't you say that? Everybody can say Kia Cook. Kia Cook, Iowa. Hey. Yeah. 
Yes. That, that you know, it was a hotbed. It really was for racers back in the sixties, even probably into the fifties. Um Is that where Steven was from? Uh I'm just assuming he was talking about Stephen Knight. Yeah. He might have been from up there. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but, you know, from from that town, uh, several years in a row, they had champions for all kinds of divisions. They had the IMCA stock car division. They had the ARCA series. They had the USAC championship. And sometimes they'd win two or three of those between the drivers. And uh, Don White was from Keokuk and won a lot of USAC races. Um Ernie Durr was an 11, I believe 11 time champion of IMCA. Uh, and he also raced some, uh, USAC at the, in his latter years of career. But, uh, Ron and Dick Hutcherson, um, you know, all those guys from mm-hmm. a little town in the Midwest on the Mississippi river of, you know, at, at its prime, it was about 17,000 people. So wow. to pull those kind of drivers out of there, um, was there was that the local big. track? Was the name of it? Was it? Uh, we had a where, local local dirt track there where they all kind of started in jalopies and whatnot. And then uh, you know I don't know it, they just they they were able to branch out. And uh, obviously Dick Hutcherson came south and went NASCAR racing for Holman and Moody. Won a lot of races and uh, started Hutch and Pagan. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, Ron Hutcherson, I don't know if I mentioned him as a driver as well. He was an ARCA champion a couple, two, three times. So yeah, lot, lots of good racers. And those guys, if they always figured if they could beat each other, that they would win the races. And they pretty much did. I think one year and don't quote me on this, but I was, th- I was thinking like 50 races, 54 races in IMCA. And it was a Kia cup driver that won every one of them. Okay. Yeah. How about that? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, his, uh, Ron's son lives over here in Statesville. Mm-hmm. His name's Rick. And then yeah. uh, Ronnie, she, she ended up moving down to Florida with her dad. Right. Down that way. Yeah. So during that time, you were you were starting out racing USAC, you were saying, right? It was that primarily what they were running out there? Because you raced against other drivers like Rusty and... Yeah, I was, I was fortunate, fortunate enough. Uh, Alan Kowicki was in Mark. there and Rusty and... Um, Mark. I don't, I don't know that I ever raced against Mark, you know, because he was an ASA racer. Okay. Yeah. So he and Rusty were heavy duty in the ASA with Dick Trickle and those guys. But mm-hmm. when they come over to run USAC, Joe Rutman was there, um, and the Bowser guys, Jack and Jack Bowser and his son Gary, and I think there was another one of those there too. So some really good racers. We ran a lot of races at the Milwaukee Mile. Mm-hmm. We'd run four times a year back there in USAC. So. Uh, I I was lucky enough to run there a couple of times, but uh, not as much as I wanted to, obviously. But yeah. Never so you, the most of the, primarily the driving you did was in USAC more so than Xfinity and stuff in ARCA, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I didn't do any kind of Xfinity driving. Um, you know, when when we got to that level after doing all this other stuff, I I been a crew chief and a couple of other things there and shop for them as a team manager so mm-hmm. tried all that stuff on i'm thinking man we just gotta yeah. we gotta do this thing here and yeah. go racing well, cliff so. champion says uh hey uh, hey uh cory yeah yeah he's tuned in on our facebook <laughs> there we go yeah, yeah cliff and i worked together at the, he was actually at the skull car before i was there and then uh came back and and had some time there and then he and i worked together a little bit at uh hendrix on the on Jeff Gordon's car, so yeah. Phil, would times. you go ahead and read some of the questions we got coming in there? Yeah, I was going to say uh, random epic Tim. Is that Tim? You yeah, said? that's it. He, he wanted to comment that Corey was right. Ken Schrader won that lone truck race there in 95. It's considered the slowest race from what he remembers. Yeah, that was like a parking lot as I remember. Yeah, sure enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, he also wanted to know, I uh, was wondering why the deal with Skoll, Winston, Kodiak was leaving the sport around 2000. Was that because of the lockdown on tobacco products? Or? As far as I know, you know, they were pushing really hard. You know, it eventually got Winston, too. Yeah. So uh, I think the government was really putting the heat on everybody to to exit racing and, and sports probably in general. No uh, more Joe think, Camel. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was that was the last run for him, so sure enough. I mean, when you put Jimmy Spencer and Joe Camel together, that'll end anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Hey, now, don't be picking on Jimmy. Oh, no. I want to race with him as his crew chief Jimmy's, at Vegas. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, Pontiac's at Sabco for years. Always wondered why y'all switched to Chevy in 97. Was the Pontiac 
that bad or Chevy that good? Well, that was before me that they swapped over there. But typically when a team will change over, uh, you know, it kind of depends on what the manufacturer wants to push as far as what cars the old mm-hmm. saying about uh, win on Sunday and sell on Monday. You know, it's back then it was more prominent and teams would kind of, you know, if you're within that GM family, you might be a Pontiac or an Oldsmobile or, yeah. or Chevy. And some of them went back and forth a few times. Sure enough, Pontiac was pushing pretty hard right through there. And then when they kind of sloped off a little bit, if you will, Oldsmobile kind of backed off, uh, eventually got all the way out, I think, before Pontiac. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was the same engine anyway. So we run because I was doing engines, obviously. Yeah, and we run Chevrolet engine. You just put what said Pontiac on the valve cover, the little decal, right? But it was still the Chevrolet. Yeah. So that didn't change. You know, it was just a matter of changing, uh, maybe the nose and a little bit. You know. Yeah, whatever the body was, you know. But we were kind of all, especially at the end of when you built cars like that. The hood, the roof, the deck lid was all the same pretty much on everybody's car, yeah, you know. And then yeah. we got into these sideways cars and all kinds of tricks. And and uh, the fabricators were having a field day and having a great time building cars. And those guys are, you know, they're to be commended for sure yeah. because they're craftsmen. Oh, uh, what they would do with the English wheel. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Craftsmen, true craftsmen. How many, how many of y'all out there know what an English wheel is? There you go. Well, I can tell you my wife's, uh, Trace, Tracy, her dad has one in his shop. Wow. You know, Ken Thompson. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's your dad. Ken knows English how to wheel. use it, too. Let me say. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he like, does. He lives right down the street from me, actually. Okay. Yeah. Did you realize that was uh, Tracy's dad? I did not. Okay. Did not. Yeah, and her, yeah. her brother, um, we we were Dan, we worked Dan. with. Yep. And, and so, yeah. Uh, I always like going over there and going in his shop and seeing what he's working on. He's actually not working much now yeah. in there, but he's got some, still got some really cool stuff. Oh, around. yeah. Yeah, I'll bet. Because, you oh. know, at one time he built all the hitters for NASCAR and sure, sure. stuff like that. So. Yeah, when you, when you mentioned True Craftsman, I'm sure if you went through the, yeah. our our era of garage, Ken Thompson's, they would definitely come up. Yeah. Sure. Every time I talk to anybody, any driver or anything, they're like, they could say he's a genius. Yeah. They're just a, you know, very good. Yeah, yeah. sure enough. Mm-hmm. So one of the questions was, is there a um, in your USAC experience, is there one track you liked the most or you missed the most? What was your favorite one running back then, either if it was local or? Well, just like anybody, if if you run well at a racetrack, then you like that track. You know, and I don't know if, I don't know if one causes the other or how that happens, but I, I seem to pull in pretty good on the mild dirt tracks. And you, back then, USAC had a couple of them. They, they ran it to Springfield, Illinois, Des Moines, Illinois. And then they would branch out. Maybe they would run the Indiana State Fair. I didn't ever run there, but I, I was kind of pulled into those racetracks because I, I felt like I could do pretty good and have a, ch- a chance to win the race. Um, in comparison, you know, even back then, equipment was everything. Uh, not that I had terrible equipment because obviously I had good equipment, but it it wasn't real current compared to some of the stuff like Rusty was running or Alan Quickey or uh, Schrader was he was in there racing with us too so um I had kind of an equalizer when I went to a place like Springfield or DeCoin on the mile I got you hmm. so after your tenure at Hendrick in uh yeah Cup I, series. I I moved over from Jeff's car there and we when the truck series started uh, helped start that truck series uh, team for for Hendrix over there, and we ran Jack Sprague for a couple of years, and then I got the itch. You know, I just thought, okay, I'm kind of doing this, and if I want to progress, I should go be a crew chief. So I went and did a uh, – back then it was Bush. It was a Bush car. So I went and did a Bush car crew chief job, and, and – uh, you know, we went along there a little bit and tore up a lot of race cars and worked a lot of hours and yeah, so sure. forth. But that, at, at the end of the year, I went to uh, Jim, Jimmy Spencer's and we started off and we were, we were really pretty good. We went to Daytona and ran ninth, led the race, uh, had some good possibilities, went to our second race because Jimmy used to run a limited schedule. So our next race was Vegas and we built a car after we got home from Daytona, basically with three or four guys and 
we went out there and and won that race. Zippo car was Zippo it? car. Yeah, I yes, remember sir. it. Yep. Yes, sir. And then uh, was Sprague was the uh, Quaker State. Is that right? Yeah, Jack. What year was truck. that? Uh, on the trucks or the Zippo, on Zippo? Jimmy won. Ninety-eight. I got ninety-eight. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was right at the second race they had there because I think the well, first race was ninety-seven. Could have been. I, I was at the first race. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been the second time out there, sure enough. So that was yeah. A good time. But yeah, we I spent two or three years there with the uh with the Quaker State truck and uh won a lot of races with Jack, learned a lot. Mm. Uh of course when you're you know at Hendrick Motorsports you pretty much have what you need. Mm-hmm. And sure that makes right. a difference, yeah. you know. When you when you say I need something to make me go faster. You, you think can, Kyle Larson feels it. that way? <laughs> Kyle's doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. I saw her um he's sorry. Having, Chase Elliott said they had, uh, they asked him, or they said, or I saw it somewhere. They asked Chase Elliott, what did he need? He said, uh, apparently a five on the side of the car. <laughs> apparently a five. Yeah. 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 Nothing but admiration for that bunch of oh, there. But, yeah. but when I worked there, uh, you know, it's much like your Sabgo days and whatnot. I was, uh, there were 64 of us. That was the engine shop, the chassis shop, wow. everybody when I went to work there. And when I left, there was probably 200. And then it escalated to a thousand, and yeah. I don't, I, you know, somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the numbers are now. now. You know? Yeah, when I started there, so, we had about twenty, I think, at the most. Yeah, yeah. Like so everybody kind of did everything. Yeah. So yeah, that that part of it, some of it's fun, you know. Sure enough. Yeah, um, Jim Dooley says Ham could just could not leave the racing world behind, so he had to, we had to marry him into it to take it with him. Awesome marriage. Just cannot leave the racing yeah. world behind. Yeah. That means you had to marry Tracy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just saying that you had to take yeah. the next step. And marry yeah. Him. Yes. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's a good point and there. And she's pretty sharp, too. Yeah? Yeah. She's not Very a dummy good. at all. She's yeah. figured him out. Oh, well. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, sure no, man. Steve Knipe says that USAC also had Dean Roper in yeah. the Muller Brothers Pontiac. He was hard to beat on dirt. He sure was. Mm. He sure was. That was kind of when... Uh, you know, in the in the early seventies, the the Chrysler stuff. I ran a kit car that was a chopped down, actually Nichols car, and then like when Rusty came in, Dave Watson was there, um, Joe Rutman, but they came in and they had their they had a better engine program, obviously yeah. than what the Chrysler stuff was at the time. They were they were trying to get out, so the Chevys came in. They had aluminum heads, and then you know different things. Um, so yeah, those guys came in and, and, uh, it was a big deal. Sure enough. Hard to beat them. You know, get a place like Milwaukee or someplace and it it was hard to beat those guys for sure. Yeah. Uh, did you ask this Rachel's question there? You mean about um, the manufacturer? Well, that was another one. What would you like to see? What manufacturer would you like to see come back in? Um, was one of them. Oh, I'd love to see them all come back in. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I'd love to see some Oldsmobiles and mm-hmm. some Pontiacs, I and heard. I'd like to see things out there that would actually looks like what's sitting out in front here. Yeah, I you had know, a little but, bird in my ear the other yeah. week that told me Dodge is coming back. Yeah, okay. not but next year, but it. I think in twenty three, Dodge will be back. Oh. Bing, bing, you heard it here yeah. on the racing routes. Ding, yeah. Ding. There you go. That's yeah. it. And then also, and, and then I, I, well, if you want me to elaborate, I can kind of give you what I heard too. Oh, no, how do I some scoop, it? man? We like I, dirt. I like to yeah. stir crap up, oh. and I went right to the source yeah. of one of the directors of one of the big teams. I won't say which one, and I asked him, you know, I kind of like, hey, any truth that Dodge is coming back? I look right at him. Yeah. No, I don't know. Huh. He said, not with us. Yeah. And he, well, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out. Yeah. You don't tiptoe into this well, thing, Phil. Come on. I, anyways, um, <laughs> when's the commercial break coming up here? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, we got about five more minutes. You trying to get I'm out of this? Think, I'm I'll thinking there might be a four team <laughs> that has not been excelling like they I yeah. see. They they I see. they used to, and they might switch over. Ah, um, there you go. With a new owner coming in, maybe. Ah, yeah. it's all nice. coming together. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see, you'll have people out there that'll you know X and O this thing. They'll get it worked out. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Phil told us. Yeah. Well, you know, it's got to be real. I never said nothing about yeah. Matt Keselowski. <laughs> nothing. I say it. Not chances are it's been yeah. in the works the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Way it goes. But you know uh, the unfortunate part about bringing a, a new man. Manufacturing. I don't know. Maybe the way this 
this new car is going to be, it might not make a big difference. But when <laughs> yeah, they did it, the, the front plate and the yeah, back plate. Yeah, <laughs> but the last time yeah. they did it, you know, it was a big expense for Dodge to come back into the sport. Yeah, uh, only because. Big, major big money. 70% of that budget went to get Neverham. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ow. Yeah. Uh, sure enough. Yeah, pretty much. And and then and two whenever they if they don't run good because it usually takes them a little while of course you got a new team you got a new members together you right. got a new car yeah, body to, to to let's not forget that they bowed out what it was it 2012 they left Mike Drop won the championship and walked away yeah yeah. I was going to say, that's what happens is I did all their engineering photography for Dodge. That was a pretty good deal. It broke my heart when they left. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, You you know, you got to have those guys in the sport for Mm -hmm. sure. All right. So Scott says, um, have you ever (laughs) cheated a race car and you have sweating bullets when the officials were looking at you? What you cheated up, but they didn't catch it. That's a good question because, you know, Never that. statute of limitations. I, I mean, always oh, stayed you're, within the book, man. You out, know that, David. Come on. I know you did. But, but you know, <laughs> Allison, there, there were some gray areas. areas. There was. There, there were gray areas. Oh, yeah. You know, you'd work them gray areas. Of course, back then, you know, they would probably take the part mm-hmm. and go off to the side with it. And they'd, you know, scold you and this and that. Uh, later in the 90s. They would find you a hundred thousand dollars and yeah. you know take your birthday, yeah. so you had to kind of back off and conform a little bit more, which is what they were wanting to do, mm. but they're still i'm I'm sure today there's still people out there working that well, I know one year they took all of our carburetors we were at Dayton, I believe it was, and I know I put a lot of work into those carburetors, and it was for nothing because they ended up taking all of them. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't I don't remember if that was ninety might have been ninety six ninety seven maybe I remember what they used to do with them though in and Daytona well, oh lay them out for lay them on yeah, the table they'd bring the tables sure. out and they put all them illegal parts out there yeah. for everybody to walk up and sure see enough. which yeah. which and, broke uh, your heart twice probably yeah because right? then you're like man how come I didn't think of that yeah, you know right, yeah. yeah so but yeah I'd I'd stay up at night worrying about something <laughs> you know trying yeah. to figure out how I could do it and get one away. not get caught two make sure it was still in that gray area so that if i did get caught they weren't gonna you know find yeah. me all that money and, oh yeah and that's what it was always get me about kicked out of the garage pressing the rule book right yeah it's not the- I, you know i think the ingenuity of those back in those days and even way before me you know with uh smoky and those guys you know i admire those guys so much because you you just think at two o'clock in the morning those guys woke up stood straight up in the bed and said man i got it yep yeah. And they yep. went to the shop and did it. Yep. I think it was Mike Bumgarner, maybe, or somebody that posted a picture the other day. And it was, uh, you could just see, or Mike Hill actually pointed it out. He could, he said, Smokey's over there checking us out. He was, Mike was on the Budweiser car. I saw that. I saw then, that picture. Yeah, so I had to zoom in on, like, wait, that is Smokey right there. Yeah. And he's yeah. just kind of looking over. And you know, he's thinking, hmm. Yeah. He's always thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> I, and you know, I, you just like me probably. Uh, back in those days, some of those guys would come around the garage to see what had changed over the years, and we'd be like, "Yeah, you know, he he was here, he did it, and he he did great." But we didn't really appreciate as much as we should have what those guys accomplished, Junior right. Johnson, all those guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and um, I know the first time I met Smokey, I was just like nothing, but I was starstruck when I met Absolutely. him. Absolutely. I had to go up and ask Cringe a question. And uh, but did you remember talking to him at all or seeing him, meeting him? Right, right. I have to, I have to block this one thing. I, I just did. Did you? Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, gotcha. um, yeah. Somebody's spamming. It's Sp- just spamming us. Yeah, no, imagine man, that. Yeah. Can't be doing that. Yeah, we don't. I don't think we're really interested in what you got to show us here. <laughs> so, oh shoot. Anyway, did you ever meet Smokey? I did, and I was the same way. Yeah. Uh, I was introduced to him and I met him at the Daytona trade show. And I was the same way. I was starstruck, and I didn't know what to say to him, really. And we had a little conversation, but then you leave or you split, and you're like, man, I should ask him, like, so much more. I should have been yeah. able to just sit down with a guy for two hours. Oh, yeah. You know, just sure. plug him. <laughs> he used to come to the NMPA Hall of Fame dinners all the time, and I would always want to be like, Smokey, what do I got to do to get one of your hats? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted yeah. one of his hats. I wanted to donate yeah. money. No, 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 no. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I see uh, Bob Patterson's joined us. Remember Bob Patterson? He was over with the 42 car. Okay. Him a check. He says, yeah, but uh, Ganassi won with the Dodge first, I guess it was. Yeah. 
They got the first win? Apparently. With Dodge. Okay. Yeah, oh, I yeah, think it was, it was uh, the zero one or that singular car. Wasn't it? Well, Sterling. Well, that, that was. Sterling won. Well, yeah, it wouldn't have been Ganassi. It would have been Sapco. Didn't they feel no. the zero one car? Well. Singular car for Jason Leffler with uh, Cram. Okay. Was that before 2001? It All was right, a Scott. Dodge. Scott, because I think uh, Sterling won 2001 in the Dodge. Or I, know. I don't know. So we'd have to look at our timeline. And gonna, see. Yeah, yeah. You know, the beer man was hanging out with Sterling today. We've all right. slept since then. Yeah. Beer man was. I'm sure he was supplying some cold, frosty. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. He was. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> Sterling's still a mess. It's pretty funny. I'm actually going to have him. Uh, he's going to call in. I believe we're going to do like a video call next Monday. Cool. That's what we're going to shoot for. Very nice. I'm going to give him a little time. I'm probably going to do a little test with him. To make sure everything's gonna work yeah. out good, but yeah, it should be yeah. fine. Absolutely, that'd be cool. I'm sure uh, Scott yeah. was talking to him and mm-hmm. and kind of set it up that way. So and uh, he said it. I said, yeah, we can definitely do that. Yeah, because sure. you know it'd be tough for him to make the trip out here. I got gotcha. you. I got. But we're also talking about having a big reunion, so that would be neat one of these days. Yeah, yeah. I, I've like had that. a couple of uh, well, one race team that I went back and we we all got together and just had dinner one night and it was really neat reminiscing, yeah. you know, and talking about stuff. And yeah. you you kind of wish the whole racing community somewhat would do that at some point, but yeah. it, it's hard you to know, get everybody. That's to a that. good thing to say. Point, Corey. A couple of years ago, I went up to GMS and they had all the old timers up there. Right. It was before COVID. It was a spring, like February, beginning of February in 2019. I don't know if they do that anymore, but yeah, there was a room. I mean, a huge. Their whole shop was full of people. Wow. It was just flowing with people. But that's that stuff is needed. We yeah. Need so that. Jeff Lemons has been talking about it too. We're, okay. yeah, we're going to yep. have like a racers reunion of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Ham will supply the music. Jeff Absolutely. will supply the barbecue, and we'll supply go. the stories. Absolutely. Yeah. So when we come, you won't back have from any our, problem. With from, stories on that one. Yeah, yeah, when we come back from our break, we'll have mm-hmm. you talk about owning your Xfinity team and, you know, okay. things from that point on. I don't worry. ready for a commercial, Mr. Ham? Or, uh, uh, yes, we are. I was actually, <laughs> I just saw that somebody had sent me a message showing Sterling with, with Scott, the pictures of it. Oh, I love that picture. If we can put that up, I don't yeah. know. So. Yeah, he showed it to me earlier um, when he was man. at the house. Yeah. Picking up his camper, headed to Martinsville. All right, so we'll be right, right back. We got Corey Stodd on Racing Roots with Ham. We'll be right back after these messages. Talk to anyone who works at Randy's Barbecue. Well,
All right, we're back to Racing Roots with Ham. This evening, we got Corey Stott in here with us, and also my buddy Phil Cavalli is joining us, also known as Photo Phil Cavalli. <laughs> Photo photographer for NASCAR for, what, 30-something years? No, six days. Oh, six yeah, days. yeah, yeah, this year. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, if you if you see any of the old pictures that, that Phil wasn't actually taking, you'll see uh, you'll see he had long hair, and he always had that white shirt with the black. It looked like a Goodwrench kind of shirt, but it was the opposite color, like white uh, oh, with that, red and the uh, black well, lines. Oh, the mean from the Winston Cup scene. Yes. Yeah. That was a uh, white with red with black and silver pants with a stripe down the side and it was it was made the owner at the time that invented the scene rob griggs he was a fan of the of the oakland raiders <laughs> so ah. he wanted the black and red and white with there the you silver you know okay yeah after one year as a photo editor i got rid of those pants though yeah, that was out <laughs> when i was just a levi 501s with yeah. a yeah. print on the side that said winston cup scene i was like that's cool uh -huh. where did wow. button flies you, you went there i i gotta <laughs> yep. go there too <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> 1976 77 right through there uh, Housby Mac actually owned, owned part of my dad's cars. He owned some of them and Jack owned part of them, but, uh, their sons got involved. Uh, Kevin ran some races for us as well, but he designed or somehow they came up with these pit uniforms that we raced in and used in, in USAC mm -hmm. and they were red satin plant pants. And we had this shirt that looked like kind of like a baseball shirt. And, uh, you know, it kind of got around there. Where are we going to the Kentucky Derby? Where are we going to be jockeys, you know? So, But we had a great right. time with them back in the day. <laughs> yeah, oh, some yeah. of the old uniforms, man. Some of them were really questionable. But, well, then you had Chi-Chi uh, that made the uniforms, and they made them up nice. Those yeah. Chi-Chi uniforms? Yeah. Yeah, Bob Patterson said 40, and I apologize. I said 40. 42. I don't know what I was thinking. I said 42. He was on a 40 car with a, with me, with Sterling. Okay. With us, yes. Yeah. And uh, Scott Felthausen says, I saw Doug Yates at the track. He, he works for the company that does the tire oh, champion. Oh, champion tire and wheel. Yeah, Scott mm -hmm. Felthausen is one of the hardest working son of a son yeah. of a good woman. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he drives the truck for him yeah, and, and loads Scott's of tires. Good man. Yeah, he's been in here before. Yeah, he has been. So he says he was up uh, starstruck when he mentioned, when he met Doug Yates, yeah, when he saw Doug and didn't muster up the courage to say hello to him. Which is oh, so funny because Doug is the easiest yeah. going guy to approach, you know. Right. He is, yeah. yeah. So go say hey to him. Just go up to him and say, uh, say Ham said it, say hey. Or it's just okay. Whatever. Yeah. And, and, and say and, you yeah. saw, saw you on Racing Roots with Ham. That's it, <laughs> yeah. That'll get him to talk to you. Exactly. Yeah. I text him probably once a month or so we keep in touch, but. I have yeah. to get him back on here sometime because like I we ran you. out of time. Actually, I was I told him, hey, don't you think maybe you need to get going because it's we're already an hour and forty five in, and he had to drive home, and his daughters were texting him, yeah, just telling him different things like don't talk about Ricky Stenhouse and yeah. don't tell him that you know that's that was my fun. love of my yeah. life or whatever. But yeah, it was good stuff. <laughs> that's what's nice yeah, about yeah. this is you can go back on your YouTube channel and check out that and watch those. And, oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I, I was surprised. I was looking at it the other day, just looking back at old races, and I saw where whenever uh, – 2001, I was a jackman for um, Hornaday, was driving our channel lock car. And then I just – I'd never seen this before, but I'm in the background talking to Big Country. Remember Big Country? Sure. Bill Miller. Yeah. And then we're just talking, standing there, hanging around back there. I'm like, hey, I looked a little bit younger back then. Mm. You probably were. Yeah, I was. Probably a were. Bit. A little was, more agile too. Yeah, I guess I was <laughs> 30s then. Wow. 20 years 30s. ago. Yeah. It was in so Scott Fellhausen says Sterling won the rain shortened race at Michigan in 2001 for Dodge. Okay. So that there was the go. first win when they came back to NASCAR. Yeah. I just couldn't remember where. I knew it was 2001. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so Tim says, please do uh, love Sterling. It's all video of him testing a race car down the dirt road. Down the dirt road, yeah. Down the dirt Scott road. Scott was talking about that yeah, today, yeah. too. So, yeah, another legend. I saw him race that track that had a star struck was the Super Tex at the Daytona 500 last year. Mm. There you go. Well, Pretty you know, good. you're bringing up the Yates thing. Uh, the year that my father did sit on the pole for the Daytona 500, the motor, the engine, mm -hmm. was built by Robert Yates. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, you remember what year that was? 76. 1976. Okay. So, yeah. Very good. So, all these, you know, through the years... All the way back, you know, all this stuff kind of intertwines somehow, mm -hmm. uh, some closer than others. But uh, they're neat stories, and you, you meet a lot of great people. You bring up people like you're talking about tonight, and you think, wow, I hadn't seen them or, you know, whatever happens. And uh, uh, neat stuff. It's like I talked to Eddie Lanier a couple of weeks ago, and he, he called and was uh, talking about coming on the show. 
and he mentioned how he was the engine builder down at home in a moody when robert yates came there and they put him fitting the bearings and moved eddie eddie lanier was fitting bearings they moved him to being the engine builder and they put robert yates uh doing the bearings oh wow so that was kind of like robert's first time first getting time in. In. yeah and he was there so wow. how cool would that be to have That's him cool yeah sitting here telling his stories yeah sure enough yeah but uh, Sterling was a relic hunter. Yeah, that's true. He Sterling likes the Civil War stuff. Right. And he actually brought me a little Civil War figure and bullets. He was saying, I got some bullets for you. And I thought he was saying books. And then, <laughs> he's, from, uh, he's, yeah. he's from Tennessee, man. Come yeah. on. Sir. That was some books for you. That's right, exactly. <laughs> so the next race, I was like, okay, hey. And he said, hey, I got, I got those bullets for you. And I was like, all right, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And then I went, and then whenever he, he's like, I got them in my pocket. I'm like got books in your pocket <laughs> <laughs> no i just added that part but anyway so he gave me these bullets for civil war bullet one was shot and one wasn't so oh anyway, cool mini ball whatever yeah they call so speaking of sterling uh how about a sterling story well i i guess the the biggest one that i remember and, and ham will remember this and this was uh 98 99 one of those two probably 99 and we were up there. It was the day Ricky Rudd ended up winning that race, and it was 142 in the shade. And, oh, Martinsville? Yeah, at Martinsville. Uh, yeah. And Sterling, you know, I I guess I never really thought of Sterling as being a good short track racer, but we were on that day, and, mm-hmm. and he was, every time we shuffled him back to the second or third or whatever, he would muscle that thing back up and lead the race. And through 300, we were looking like, man, we can, we're going to win today. Oh, yeah. We're going to win today is our day. Mm-hmm. And like 311, lap 311, she went by the front straight away, and she's cutting out. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Now <laughs> we're <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't the old rev limiter that, you know, Davey Allison used to his yeah. advantage back in the day. It was uh, – we had a problem. So, you know, we messed around. We lost a bunch of laps, and – uh that's very disheartening when you feel like that you have that much going for you right. and then when we detected the problem it was a you know 12 dollar voltage regulator mm-hmm. which is the one that always gets you so uh that was disheartening it really was and ricky went on went on and won the race and i talked to ricky the next week and of course he was burned up from mm-hmm. the seat and yeah, whatnot, you know and uh we talked about it a little bit and he said man i'd you know, it was going to be tough when it come down to the wire. And you say, well, 300 in, but 200 laps at Martinsville doesn't take a whole long time. Yeah. So I know he got burned up. He got out of the car and he was just exhausted. And, uh, but what's funny about it too, I know I had, uh, well, <clears throat> there's a long story about that, but I'm going to say, uh, but whenever I had Bill Engel on the show too, he was like, he's like, hey, I'm just going to tell you something. Cause I told him my alternator story and how I almost replaced that alternator before the race and whatever, but there was some other things going on. And he said, well, let me tell you something. Y'all didn't have. He said that the car that we had actually, we it was just I was telling Ricky just to kind of hang out behind, uh, hang out back there and just ride around because Sterling was good, but he said we were faster. Yeah, <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't ever repeat well, that. Well, <laughs> you know, and he might have been, but might have been, but, but we never got to find out, and that was a disappointing no, part. I know, right? and we had a couple of great runs on the road courses too, and yeah. and there again, you know, you think Sterling Marlin, he's a Daytona 500 guy, man, he's going to go and win Daytona 500s or tracks like that. So you don't really, at least in my mind, didn't think of him as being a, a great road, road course racer. And, and, man, he proved to me both those races that year, um, strategies didn't work out. Um, but we still had two top tens that year. So, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I know I definitely would have liked to see us not have any issues and win that race. That would have been really, really oh, yeah. cool. And, yeah. I, and I believe that's the deal. I think Sterling had the best uh, between his driving ability there and in the car and, and the engine accommodation and everything i think he was the fastest i think it's just a uh, bill engel just uh yeah he's come very on competitive. bill <laughs> hadn't seen bill in a long time you know but yeah, yeah. i see him every sure once in a while he likes one of our local bands red dirt revival and he'll always come in whenever they're playing or gotcha around town and gotcha. stuff so, yeah running yeah. in last week then down at apps and taps i was ah. down there Gotcha. It's a good concert. Yeah. There were Harwoods, last concert, and Red Dirt oh. Revival. That was your last chance to ever see. Well, I'll go to the Darryl next Harwood. Daryl Harwood concert. I will. I, my neighbor had me busy helping him with something, and then yeah. before I knew it was late, and I'm he like, He retired. Oh. There's no more. That my was neighbor? It. No, that was oh. the last concert. <laughs> that, guy, that Harwood guy? Yeah. What is he, 32 years old? Yeah. <laughs> made me retire. Hit a big uh, early. Yeah. He's out. <laughs> He's out. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I, I watched I your video that. the next morning, and, yeah. and I... 
I did that for you. You know me with the the loud crowd. <laughs> oh. I'm over sixty now. You, it was you don't know what it's like yet. You have yeah. no idea what it's happens coming, at man. sixty. Yeah. It's a brick wall, and you, and you definitely it. won't have any hair on your no, head then. No. If they no. weren't friends of mine, I, I wouldn't have worried about it. But it was just that last time. So yeah, oh, I got. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not that much into it either. So, it was, yeah, oh, you hey. you're a man about town. Don't start with. And that I closed stuff. the place down too. Oh I mean, yeah, always the last one. Wow. <laughs> Can't help it. Phil and I won't be a part of that. No, yeah, no, we can't run that. He hard. was over near yeah. us though, near Cheryl's Ford. Yeah. I thought that's yeah, five miles from my house. Close. But that's I don't yeah. I don't no I don't even drink. So yeah, if yeah. you don't drink, then it's louder, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I could have brought a headset in. Yeah, like I was at the track with them. Yeah, you could have. <laughs> well, I looked at my GPS and it said an hour and a half to get there. And and, it was it was, and I was like, yeah, that was a bad wreck. So that's what this mm, a bunch somewhere. of people had said. I yeah. Heard that. yeah. yeah. Yeah, someone actually got killed. Yeah, that night. Sure enough, they were leaving. The but I'll bet Daryl Harwood showed up on time. So what's your point? Yeah, yeah whatever. Well, anyways, he could have came in his helicopter with him. Yeah, I want to hear about <laughs> Xfinity ownership. You know, you decided to go there. Well, you like you know. You, you you know, back in the day, there you you go through a lot of things, and you think, well, you know, what's our next step here? Um, kind of did some of the other stuff and now what what do we want to do mm-hmm. where can we go with the thing and uh we started up well actually we started an arca team and ran the first year uh in arca and then you know sponsorship we didn't have that and that was the uh the crunch 2008 yeah, 2009 yeah, yeah, right, sure. 7 8 9 it all went together there yeah, and it, man, it was brutal and i had a couple of guys help them and we were trying to do things and we said well let's just get an xfinity car and and uh we did some truck racing in there too yeah. um proud of our efforts you know for what we were able to take to the racetrack but uh you know it, the that's a brutal brutal sport if you don't oh, have yeah. enough help uh you don't have enough money you're, well, like you're, you said when you started up during that time right there it was the crunch that's when yeah. NASCAR really took a hit with sponsorship yeah and we, so so your cup guys are taking all the the minor sponsors they're taking everything you know to get a smaller decal on on a cup car which you know mm-hmm. as a business person i could understand that but it mm-hmm. made it really tough for us us uh guys trying to yeah. just get to the racetrack and be able to make some runs and yeah. But it, one thing it did do for me, uh, my shop was a mile and a half from my house, even though I slept a lot of times at the race shop. I I went back to my grassroots of when I was racing with my pop and when, when he taught me how to work on race cars and things to do. And, and that part I look back on, and it's very fun for me to be able to say, you know, we did a lot with a little. Uh, mm-hmm. We went to Vegas and, and ran the whole race and, uh, you know, we're out there on used tires and we had all these guys with these fancy pit boxes and all this stuff beside us and at the end of the race they were all gone because they were wrecked and uh, i'll never forget this fireman come off the off the fence back there and he said man i just gotta tell you guys <laughs> you're amazing what you're what you're doing here with because, what you got yeah well, yeah we we pitted our car with four guys sure you know yeah. so at at the end of the day, yeah, it's not a victory, but it was a victory for us, a satisfying yeah, sure. race for us. And we we were lucky enough to do the same thing kind of at Daytona. Um, took a car down there, and actually Andy Pondstein was driving for me, and NASCAR called, uh, it was either a day or two before we were loaded up, getting ready to load up and go, and said he's not cleared to run. So we're still plugging along on this race car because we've got our – one or two guys building this race car to get ready to go to Daytona. And uh, we kind of throttled back just a little bit, but we called NASCAR. And they said, well, if you can make it to the gate by 5.30 tomorrow morning, come on, because we were going to miss the whole first day of tech. Well, they had 60-some cars. So we're like, you know, we're 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 going to try. So long story short, we called Danny Eflin on the way to Daytona. He lives down in, at the time, he lived in Columbia. Mm-hmm. And uh, we said, Danny, how'd you like to drive Daytona? Mm-hmm. He said, I'd love to. So, well, here's the gig. you got to drive us to Daytona to Tonight. be able to drive the race car. All right. right. So <laughs> we go down there with a shot, you know, one in a thousand of making yeah. the race. And that was back when you did the P thing for, for qualifying. Mm-hmm. I didn't even go because we're still building the race car, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a good number. So it rained out, rained all day long for qualifying. Practice, everything was washed out. So we got in a race on that. 
And we we did get some practice laps. I don't know that we were going to make it one way or the other, but we got in a race. We had a little sponsor, ran along all day long, said, you know. Survive. Survive. Yeah, yeah we're just back there holding That's out. All. I yeah. think it was Danica's first race in the uh, – the seven yeah in the seven yeah, car yeah. yeah go daddy go daddy yeah, car yeah, yeah. so uh Which, andy actually went up and spotted for me and, and they had a million dollar sponsorship yeah. for that race and you well, had what a four thousand dollar one yeah pretty close pretty close <laughs> yeah. well andy's up there spotting and danny's getting ready to pass her and he mm-hmm. said well there's uh i might mess this up there's a million dollar sponsor or a million dollars getting passed by ten dollars you know basically yeah, is what yeah, it meant sure. so and that was a big deal for us and we ran all yeah. day and i gave him the green flag to go about 20 to go and he's mm-hmm. up there and he's having the time of his uh danny he's yeah. having a great time we're going yeah. down the back stretch we have a chance of top 10 you know mm-hmm. and we're going down through there and we're like 13th 14th and there was four or five of them that got together kyle bush was involved and a whole bunch of them and danny ended up in it but he he got it fired up. He come across the line, four flat tires, and the bodies nearly tore off his car. But we finished the race. All right, you know, but our yeah. best race. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. an accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, it, in some people's eyes, that's not in mine, mm-hmm. and in the guys that uh, Rick Guy, my neighbor, who lived at the race shop with me there for that last two or three weeks or month before we went, it was a big deal. Yeah. Well, especially like you said, everything that led up to it. Yeah, you know? yeah. We we actually Rick had sat down and kind of put that on paper one day. And, and when you tell people about that, yeah. thing, you know, like in perspective, you just kind of you have know to put what it in everybody has their own storybook story. You know? Oh yeah, and that was it. Yeah, you know? yeah. So out of and, and that's what can happen at Daytona. That's why Michael McDowell. You know, look at that. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Yeah. See, so you, you know, out of out of all that that took place that was uh that was a victory for us it really was you know so in your long career what was your favorite race would that that might be right up there that that would have to be up there for accomplishment sure Uh, even though you know on a on a net at the end of the day we didn't finish in the top five or win the race or anything but but it would be way up there lap in daytona yeah in a going down the back stretch in a a car where you're going to have to put so much effort into massaging that car back then yeah to make it go to stay i mean that's quite an accomplishment you know yeah i remember (laughs) you know we're just climbing around on this car and of course we had to cut this and cut that to get through tech and we're a day behind anyway so we're trying to catch up and You know, we we really shouldn't have even gone, uh, but I'm glad we did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure enough. So, you know, I would put that up there. I would put uh, Jeff Gordon's first victory at Charlotte. That would have to be up there. The first Brickyard win, that would be up there. Uh, the first ever uh, win that I was a part of in Winston Cup with – with Phil Parsons at mm-hmm. Talladega, that has to be up there. So, and the same kind of thing, you know, you don't have a lot of people involved. So, to me, that makes it more gratifying. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. I mean, you got two or three guys pounded on that car to go to Daytona, and Danica has a 37 people working on her car. Yeah. You know, and you blow right, not blow out yeah. by, but you made the pass. And yeah. Yeah, and that, you know that's not taking anything away from her. She no, was struggling it, right through that point, yeah. and then got back up way ahead of us. And then they got, you know, of course at Daytona you're going to have them pile ups, and we were still riding. That was my idea the whole time was yeah. lay back as long as we can. Uh, and then I got excited and said, <laughs> you know, at twenty to go, yeah, let's do go. What you got to do, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. Danny was Danny was uh, <laughs> he did a heck of a job for us. It was great fun. Well, my wife's tuned in now, so I, oh. have to be, I have to behave. You are going to have to behave. Yep. So that's why I just got quiet all of a sudden. You know? Oh, okay. And uh, so backed out. Hello, Tracy. She probably knows a couple of good racing stories as well. She probably have to straighten you out. She well, speaking of Martinsville, I know she went to Martinsville with her dad when he was with um, when he was with uh, Harry Gant. Harry Gant Skull mm-hmm. Car. Yeah, that's right. So was that team? Somebody asked us the other day. You know, there was Copenhagen and there was the Skull. Right, but were they ever? Were they? Were there? Where was the Copenhagen shop? The Copenhagen shop was actually about uh, f- four or five miles south. I guess it would be south towards uh, Fort Charlotte on sixteen. Okay, you know from the other shop, mm-hmm. which the other shop was started when they started that Skull Car with Harry Gant 
And uh, actually, he started with Stan, Stan Barrett. Okay, yeah. And then Harry mm-hmm. took over, and that was Travis Carter, and, mm-hmm. and they had their shop. And then when I first came to work, uh, actually, when I interviewed for the job, Benny Parsons was going to split the schedule with Phil because they were just part-time racers before that. You know, they'd mm-hmm. run, say, 15 races. And then Benny got the call to go drive the Folgers car. Okay. So then uh, Johnny Hayes, one of the greatest yeah. guys in the world, yeah. he uh, he said, well, that's fine. We'll just run Phil all the mm-hmm. races. So that's yeah. that's how we did that. So there was the, I've got on my old, old toolbox. My very first box has got the um, Crown car. Right. From yeah, that was a Crown Skull car, uh, 1989. Mm, I believe probably so. Maybe, yeah. That's about when I got my first toolbox, 88, yeah. 89. And then I put that decal on it. I gotcha. Scott says, uh, Scott Felthausen says, I wish I would have owned a stock in Bondo just for the line tech, the tech line in Daytona 500. Now, you remember back in the day whenever you, you could do all that stuff at Daytona 500, you had you had to bring your body guy and your paint guy. Oh, yeah. You know, and and you as a the motor 90s. guy, engine guy, you probably got to do some Bondo work, too. You know, everybody <laughs> did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, I can remember repainting, well, doing all of, not my just myself, but mm-hmm. several of us. Uh, we couldn't get through the room of doom. It took us like 15 times to get through there, and we basically had to remold that whole car at the racetrack. So, with that being said, compared to these days, third time, third time, you're you're out. You're out. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, I mean, they would have got tired of us real early. We we <laughs> well, could have went out and played on the beach, right? But I mean, you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back then, you, like you were saying, Corey, you literally would do stuff over and over and over and over. They let you keep going through back then. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah it, it, it the whole sport has changed in that respect. But we weren't the only ones. You know, I saw them cut the whole back end off the Kings called Pontiac down there. Uh, mm-hmm. something they were told to do before they got there and didn't do it, I guess. Uh-huh. I, I don't know the story on it, but I know they had both quarter panels, the whole tail off that car just to get through tech. So yeah. Now yeah. with these new cars, you can't do that. I No, I don't know much about how they do Because that. they have yeah. those, uh, that I don't know how to explain it, but it looks like little bumps. And I guess if you do any kind of alteration, they'd be able to tell that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's still some people trying to do some things in areas oh, that sure. aren't covered, but I think you know as as they've gone through the years, they've tightened all those areas up. Well, sure. it's like you said earlier, Corey. There's guys that wake up in the middle of the night. I've got it. Yeah, I've got a way to suck that body part in. Right. When it's going down the back pre- stretch yeah. and let the pressure let it off as it goes in the, you know, they'll yeah. come up with magic like. Yeah, that. a lot of times what would happen is you end up coming back with stuff that you you did maybe ten years ago. You know, like we had the uh, – I'll have to ask Glass Cox whenever he comes in about the uh, the spacer inside the intake manifold, mm-hmm. the the plastic, the um, and it was about, I don't know, two inch thick, and it had the four holes right. that would mm-hmm. move up and yeah. against the carburetor. Yeah. And so I think that was like a $50,000 fine. Mm-hmm. And that Probably was something so. that had been Even back before. then, would, you know, it would be a million five now. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but you know the cool yeah. thing about that restrictor plate deal, and I don't, I don't know enough about it, but when in the early '70s or maybe even the '60s, uh, they had a similar restrictor plate kind of thing. So I'm working on the skull car, and I'm telling my pop, you know, they got the coolest thing. Well, you know, we got to make this thing here. There, mm-hmm. and he's like, he walks over to the shelf in his little shop there, and he's. He's like, something like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I say, yeah, yeah. How long ago was that? You know? So like you said, it does yeah. come back. Right. Some and of and it. what about Sterno? Did he ever talk about that? Uh, he didn't. He yeah. didn't. I, I had a couple of conversations about it. But yeah. Yeah. But, uh, in the air cleaner. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or in the plenum. Yeah. Either way, I guess. Yeah, Tell they, everybody about that, David. They borrowed my air yeah. cleaner one time over that. Yeah. Oh, they yes. It. They didn't like that at all. They and didn't I, like that. But, you know. They didn't take my birthday and didn't find me a hundred grand. So yeah. you just told them that you were going to light it so you could cook a pizza. Hey, we just had to get things warmed up. That's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's and that's one of those things. Probably you know, whenever one person in the garage hears about it, and then they're oh like, yeah, you know, it just starts yeah. going. Yeah, through. yeah. And then NASCAR is kind of like the last ones they hear, they hear, and then once they do, then everybody else just starts panicking. Oh my gosh, we're doing that too. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah, yeah, sure enough. That and um, oh, there was different things. I mean, and there was some stuff that was legal, legit that you would do to an engine, let's say, that uh, NASCAR approved it eventually. But it was like worth ten, fifteen horsepower, right? You know, let's say like the segmented oil pans, 
Yeah. That, that or pit. like that big oil pan I was telling you about yeah, that exactly. they made a rule. You can't have a 55-gallon drum on the bottom of your engine. Right. <laughs> you know, cause know. just because you're making 10 more horsepower or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. That's like Penske did the segmented oil pans, but then one of the guys that worked there, you know, his son went to work at Bill Davis. Sure. So then we started doing it, and, you know, yeah. and the kid got it. Six a, months down the way, everybody knows race. about it. Sure, right. because, of, yeah. you know, it's... So moved on. I was at Bill Davis, and then they they were saying, "Hey, Robert Yates, they have this, they're running really fast as they usually did it at Talladega, I believe it was. It was Daytona Talladega, one of the super speedways." And they were like, "Okay, we need to come up with something that we can put on our oil pan. We can't change the oil pan in the car, but it needs to bolt up to the oil pan." So I was like, "All right, this is what I'm going to do. So fabricate this type of it's like it looked like a shield, mm-hmm. and then I made some I welded some bungs together that I can just drain." Where you would normally, let's say, take the oil pan off, the, the bones that go in there, or there was... Anyway, took those out, welded some bolts, made some special bolts, screw them up in there. Special bolts. Yeah, so that was I've never seen any of those in racing. <laughs> you on, know, David. they were... <laughs> the, ones that, the ones that had holes through them. Uh, <laughs> now I'm letting suck it air. Now, that's another story. That's an, yeah, could, there's a lot of them stories. Yeah, yeah, we could get into a lot of that, too. But this was just to, to bolt that shield on. And then, uh, you know, I made a bunch of them, and then eventually they were like, well... They don't want that because it could fall off. And they're like, you know, it has to be welded on to the, to the engine. So yeah, they didn't end up letting us run them anyway, but it helped. I mean, all these sure. little things, you know, the yeah. air going underneath the car would come to a stopping point and it would hit that and that right. would slow it down that slow much. Down. Yeah. So if you could get it to run right over the bell housing, that, yeah. that was it. Just yeah. those little things like that. Pam. Pam. Remember There's all kinds of Everham started yeah, spraying Pam on well, the cars. I can remember we went to Daytona the first 93 with jeff and he he ended up winning the uh bush clash right, right yep. was that 93 yep no 94 yeah, no, 94 90. he won it but uh 93 we're getting ready and we're, you know we're running good and all that stuff and and he's got a son of their wax in the underside of the car and back then there weren't a lot of people yet that discovered mm-hmm. you needed to do some undercarriage work. I'm sure there yeah, were, you yeah. know, but we, I didn't know about them as much. Yeah. Smokey probably already had that 20 years before probably that, so, you know, but sure. I didn't know. Tie about rod it. ends that were aerodynamic. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Remove well, desserts. I don't know if we, you know, maybe didn't do all that. No, but what, saying, oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, just, <laughs> we did. Yeah. Sure enough. Whatever it But took. it made a difference, you know. Sure. And then, and it's like, not, you know, with the break, we could go into a whole show about all this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Especially, you might get somebody in trouble. Though, yeah, you that's know. true. I don't know if statute of oh. limitations is passed. Uh, mine should be run out. <laughs> I don't know about yours. Yours is good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, what am I? <laughs> yeah. Who's in it anymore? Yeah. Me, I just got a camera. I'll yeah, take pictures it. of it. Yeah. Yeah, he'll he's, take pictures of it. That's what I was thinking when you're talking he's about laying the engine parts out. <laughs> yeah, he's got oh, a whole yeah. dictionary over there. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, you could take that, that and sell it. To we to used to do that. My, that Deb Williams that I worked with, the yeah. energy field, yeah. Cavalli, get over there and take picture of them parts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's some uh, good money right there you could sell loose. Well, yeah. think about the money that was put into the research and development oh, man. of each part. Sure. I mean, you might have, this day and age, you put $100,000 of research into right. a part that might be found and kicked and then cost you 100000 more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, but it's sure like enough. everybody, everybody's got to push the envelope or... Oh, if you don't, no, then no, you might as well stay home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> might as well stay home. No doubt. Yeah, I talk about, you know, waking up in the middle of the night. I I used to have the roommates uh, at the racetrack. And one night I set up my first year of being a crew chief on a ex- uh, bush car back then. And I sat straight up in the bed. And I'm like, oh, man, I got this thing. I got this thing. And he's like, what are you what are you doing, man? What are you doing? I said, I got my pencil. I got my pad. This is what we're going to do when we get to the racetrack. Yeah. Yeah, just stuff like that. Now, did you <clears throat> did you have a lot of uh, sleepless nights because of I mean, while you're oh yeah, I Absolutely. could imagine that. Was Absolutely. there less? W- which gave you more of a sleepless night, ownership of the team or being the crew chief? I uh, probably lost the equal amount of sleep on both of them, except when I was owning the team, I still worked on the cars, so I would yeah. be under under the car at three or four o'clock in the morning, waiting. Yeah. You know, not waiting, but. The sun came up and my guys would come back in and say, you know, did you go home? I, no, no, yeah. I've just been digging along. Yeah, right. So, but that was that brought me back to the era of when I raced with my pop back right. in the seventies. You know, mm-hmm. so that, yeah, that was and, yeah. looking back now, it was great. Mm-hmm. It, it was gratifying. Yeah, you know? yeah. Back then, you had to do whatever you needed to do. I mean, if something wasn't ready or if you didn't feel completely hundred percent good about it. 
I mean, you had to put in the time. There was no way around it. Right. And well, because we, there was you always had there. the other option of going to the track, and the NASCAR would help you with anything you need. Sure, <laughs> yeah, they, they would. They would yeah. throw on inspectors to help you. Give you extra time. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Oh, you no. need a different plate? Hold on. Why don't you just trim that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, there was, different, there was times where you'd have to stay in, you know, build, just build another engine because you just needed another engine. Or, yeah. you know, take, take the car that, that you know, Joe Nemechek just – run the fastest lap but he hit the wall so you had to take oh. and go swap the engine out into another car that they ended up buying off an arca team anyway all this kind of stuff. well and you were there stuff. you were there the year that daytona fourth of july race got canceled for the fires so yeah. then we came back we ran talladega one week and daytona the next week so engine wise man you guys had to have it all yeah it was you wild know, come back and we came back from the racetrack uh, pulled engines out. You guys started pulling apart that night at like midnight. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, and when I was at Robert Yates racing, we had, um, and then it turned into Roush Yates engines. We would have times where, let's say, Elliot Sadler had the engine, you know, in the M&M's car. And he got, he won, let's see, he won one of the Gatorade 150s or whatever it was then, mm -hmm. 125s, I don't remember. They, it changed at some point. Yeah. And But yeah. he wanted that exact same engine, same heads, everything. So sent it back to the shop, and they told me, "Hey, we need you to rebuild this engine, just like you did the last time." <laughs> so, just like, yeah. So yeah. it's like, okay, so we got to build this engine again. And you and got all kinds of time to do it too. We need it in thirty-eight least, minutes. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah. got to go. <laughs> so <laughs> if you, hope you didn't have plans tonight, but this is what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But sure. I mean, you know, that was what we did, and it was what we. I mean, that was. It, it's kind of like you said. It brought you back to. It makes you feel challenged and like I'm gonna yeah dig that's your in charge get this done your charge sure yeah. enough and a lot of times it would take me back to being dirt tracking days or when I race go karts and I just stay up all night getting my stuff ready <laughs> yeah but you know yeah. it's it's kind of I'm like over being all that right staying up all night now but stuff. yes you know, that's, there was a, that's it man <laughs> but they come to a certain point where I was like okay that's yeah. it yeah <laughs> yeah I can uh, get past that now but, but that that was back when you could work on the whole car yeah you know this you day could. and age. It, yeah, it's guys. Special. I, sorry, I only work on the hub. Yep. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure specialized not. on each particular part. Right. The same way. Same way with the engines. It's changed to that. You yeah. Know, most of the guys at the top that are the engine builders can still do all the other work. Mm -hmm. But to kind of make them all the same and to um, to make it all flow more efficiently, you got more people, and they just specify on particular parts. Specialize on. One do, one person does the rings, one person fits the bearings, and then one person puts the cranks in, one person rolls the pistons, you know, has them cut. That kind of right. rolling means having them machined. Yeah. You know, to fit. Yeah, so it's it's a different different era. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Yeah. We will see. Yeah. If we could just go back. Yeah. Oh, no. Well we can't now. Yeah. Hey, but think about it. If we went back and then we had as many people as we have now on the teams. Well, it'd still be the same mess, ago. David. Come on. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. exactly. It'd still be the uh, same mess. Yeah. No. It's still going to end up this way. Yeah. yeah, you can't reinvent Co the wheel, right? A couple yes. little shout outs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'm I mentioned also. to you, but we lost a crew guy with Bill Davis a week or two ago, Gray Warren. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. Sad to say he passed on. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Eddie Hunt, he says, tell Corey, I said, hello. We were just talking about you a little bit ago. Oh, my. Actually, before the show started, we were talking Eddie. about Eddie. Yeah. Get him back in here sometime. He can actually, he can come in here and start helping out some with the show. Absolutely. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. He's got a story or 12. Gosh. Yes. Don't <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 man. He has so many stories. And he was over with the, with the, Tracy's dad. He worked over on that um, Harry Gant. On the Harry Gant school mm -hmm. bar. Sure. So and then are. later on, he ended up working on the, the, Skull Classic car mm -hmm. when I was still there, and then okay. he he rode that thing out for a long time, and uh, then he went to the Gibbs deal, I think, from there. Yeah, so, sure. Yeah, because he's been down there for a while over at Gibbs. Yeah. And uh, let's see, Tim says, uh, "No, do no way you worked on my favorite driver's car, the '38 Elliott Sadler. This is awesome. Yeah, I could tell you some stories about Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> so can I. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Elliot, uh, he was." Anyways, yeah. He, <laughs> Anyways, wow. yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, oh, he you was know, right up there. Right, yeah. There's a few drivers that were in his league, and he was right up there. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Dickie like Dennis it. is saying uh, awesome behind the scenes shop talk tonight. It's kind so, of funny, you know. Each person we have in here as a guest, it's like you, you talk about something, and it just brings back memories, you right. know, for me and Phil, mm -hmm. and yeah. and you know, things just spark. That's why yeah. it's such a good conversation yeah. to have. So speaking of Dickie Dennis, do you know who he is? Oh, come on. Everybody remembers Dickie oh, Dennis. Yeah. We're going to see him this weekend in Martinsville. Yeah. He's an infamous yeah. fence climber at Richmond. Remember oh, the guy that climbed yeah. up on the fence? Yeah, got gotcha. you. You're going to yeah. see him at Martinsville. He'll yeah. be at Martinsville, wow. yeah. We're going to hang go. with the, the big Dickie Dennis. There you go. Yeah, we're not going to say if he's going to go into the track or not. Just well, no. It might be top he secret. You're not sure? We're going we're gonna to chain Traveling him up. Incognito. Yeah. <laughs> Put a chain on him. <laughs> he's only not allowed to go back to Richmond. Richmond. Oh, yeah. Ever. Okay. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Ever. yeah. He should be able to get one of them he, Saturday tickets and going with us. Something, yeah. He's, awesome. he's got his own very own certification letter that says he cannot go back. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you just have to leave that letter home. So I, I have a couple of those letters that came from Daytona that I'm not really fond to say yes. i've got a couple too <laughs> i got yeah i want to say when i was at the scene i think it was 98 when they were testing the lumina mm. at talladega and my yep. editor tom jensen said to me he says phil can we get a photo of that i says i'll get a photo of that if you sure. want sure I can he, get one. He gave me a five hundred dollar bounty and said if you can get a photo of that that test phil i'll well, they also gave me the business card. I Game got, on. I got the same van, <laughs> and this is, I drove all the way down to uh, Aniston, yeah. and I stayed in a hotel room, mm -hmm. and I remember I was coming down to go to dinner, and Danny Lawrence was going up, and he was like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, you do not oh. see me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next morning, I got up real early, and I drove around to the back of the track and parked my scene van in like a... a scrap pile Hit jump out. Car, yeah. you know and then i got in and i squeezed through the, the see fence. even photographers did stuff yes they, and i had the long yeah, lens yeah, yeah. and it was like seven in the morning i climbed uh, into the unical ball off of turn two it was full <laughs> of wasps nests and stuff and it was it was i sat in there for like three or yeah. four hours before they started racing and then i shot a yeah. whole bunch of pictures and i took the film and threw it across the road into the ditch and as i was leaving i got caught by security oh. and i told them that i had been just taking pictures of the, the reconstruction going on and they're yeah. like well, give us the film so i opened the back of the camera up and pulled the film out and i give it to them so they couldn't see it oh and then i went back good. to the hotel and that later that night i dressed up in black and i <laughs> i came back and i i parked like two miles from the track and i come down the road through the, the side and i went to and i found the film in the ditch no way. Yeah, I did. And I took it back and i got the 500 dollars and i got the letter from nascar too yeah they didn't, they didn't appreciate yeah. it, no, did they? Yeah. Uh, it was set from Talladega <laughs> through NASCAR. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, they man. Were, they were That's when you know you've arrived, though, man. When you oh, get that official that's letter. It. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. sad part of that is when well, they want you to send some more money down there yeah. to them. I think it was yes. Ricky Humphreys that was in charge of it. And every time I, I think I saw Ricky last year somewhere, and I, and he says, "Hey, Phil, how you doing?" I says, "I'm credentialed. Well, I'm credentialed, got it, man. Ricky." Yeah. yeah. Okay. They didn't have your picture hanging up there. <laughs> Do not allow this person into the track. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. All right, so Bob Patterson said, yeah, Scott, back in those days, if you didn't pass inspection for the first time, he's talking to Scott Felsen, through you, you had to step some mud. You had to slap some mud, as Tony Glover would say. Yeah, slap, slap some, some mud To fit the it. templates, you know. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> slap a little mud on there. That's yeah. it. And uh, Tim says, I learned Rockingham Speedway had a welding shop in the track infield. Did the other tracks have them, too? A welding shop? Some of them did, as I remember. Yeah, Lincoln, Lincoln set up uh, a lot. Yeah. For for some years through there, and I'm sure sometimes there weren't anything there. So then you had to have all that stuff on your transporter to rebuild something, you know. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of stuff that was going on back in the day, and that's one of the things that uh, Scott's talking about: the Harvest Car and Elliot's with the tape on the spoiler. Or the two recent things that come to mind. Yeah, spoilers were a big issue back in the day. You know. No. My gosh, the angle of the spoiler. And, yeah. And then the height of them, and then changing See, you're, them. See, you're too young for this. Phil would remember these. Don't these, lean uh, on it. Don't lean on it. Zero degree spoilers, you know. Yes. Yeah, zero <laughs> degrees for Daytona qualifying. Yeah. Let it remember all that? hang out, yeah. baby. Yes. Of course, we were qualifying uh, shoeboxes, so, you know, I mean, it was. <laughs> oh, you yeah. couldn't put a spoiler on it. <laughs> you never yes. realize how high that car sat oh, off, the, off the, I mean, 
Yeah, if you look They're, back at those pictures, and then you look at these ones that sit on the floor today or at three, the racetrack. Three, four inches of spoilers. Yes. Yeah. No, Dicky says, I, I am allowed at Martinsville. Yeah, we know. We were just kidding. Uh, but it's what he was saying. If you, <laughs> I am allowed. <laughs> uh, he said, and if Scott says, I didn't know that Phil worked for the scene. I had lunch with Rick Houston over at Vegas a few weeks ago and when we were racing there. I hope Rick, Rick bought lunch because he's a big eater. <laughs> no, I've worked there for 12 years. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Now, Rick Houston's with the with that garage shop they were just talking about a little bit ago, I believe. No, he does a scene vault. He does a podcast called The Scene Vault. Okay. Yeah. Where he gets people in. He tries yeah. to keep up with you and, you know. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, you Rick's know. Rick's a good man. Rick's done a lot of books. He did a yeah. Second to None, a book about the Bush series oh. that I supplied a lot of photos for. Good. Good man, Rick and his wife, Jeannie. Mm-hmm. She's a sweetheart. They got two twin boys. I guess those boys have got to be about 21, 22 years old now. Okay. Jeannie's a retired uh, judge mm. up in Yadkin County. Yadkin. So she was, whenever I would drive through Yadkin County, I would drive fast. No. <laughs> but sure. can't no more. She's retired. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, would Sweet he have lady. anything to do with the uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame down there in Charlotte? Rick? Yeah. I'm I just not, didn't know. I met some I'm, guy. Down Tom there. Jensen does. Okay. Tom Jensen, the, the guy, guy I was talking about that paid the five hundred dollar bounty for me oh, to yeah. do it. He's in trouble now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you just said his name again. Yeah. No he's way. one of the he's one of the big wigs down there. Uh, uh, the Hall of Fame. Tom, great guy. I call, yes. used to call him the Hammer. The Hammer. The Hammer. When the Hammer falls, you better not be under it. But he hmm. and I were a force to be reckoned with because. Hmm. We had a motto, Tom and I, whatever it took, whatever it took, we would get that, the shot. There you go. Yeah, yep. That's it. <laughs> that's when I could just do anything and not get in Even trouble. That, now when I sneeze, I get reprimanded. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, sure. That's right. Even at that hole in the homestead fence. Oh, yeah. That used to be me, there. Yep. Yep. If you want to see that video, actually, I should have put that on before this one started or after. Anyway, it's on there. You can check mm-hmm. it out on my YouTube channel, DHAM I Am, if you'd like to see Lots of different racing videos. And also go to my website, dhamim.com. And do me one more favor here. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoy this video. If you didn't enjoy it, hit it thumbs up twice. Yeah. Yeah. Give it twice. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I know a picture out. you need to come up with. You probably have it somewhere. Yeah. We were at Charlotte, 98, probably. Okay. Have a big wreck. The big one. The big one. Tears the body completely off this car. Right? Yeah. Sterling. Yeah. And we came in back then. You could rebuild cars, you know. Can't do any of that stuff now, I don't think. But yeah, yeah we sent that thing back out. We had a mount of radiator, and we duct taped everything up, and it looked like a poor limp dog had there, a, you know. It had a sheet metal on the side with a forty yeah, duct tape yeah, on it, or whatever. Yeah, yeah you need to post that. that picture. You were on, cool. even the engine guy had to get involved in that rebuild. Yeah, you know? well, he handled the tape. Yeah, put the number. Yeah. I'll put that on. My, um, I'll put that on the website. That's a sweet picture. That. I I still it have is. one of them at my house. You know, I'm like, yeah. you just never give up. You know, that was the attitude back then. And I don't know nowadays with those cars. I don't guess you could really do that. You just have to park them. Yeah, they. You know, they've got the bear bond, which we never had privy to back then. Mm-hmm. But they've got bear bond, and they can kind of form some stuff up. And I oh, think okay. they do a lot of creative things with those. But mm-hmm. uh, six yeah. minute clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get her yes. done. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tim says I bet Darlington has a lot of uh, unique hook nooks and crannies. Darlington was it? I love going to that track. It was very historic. You'd have the names of the the drivers in the past that won, you know, out there on the fence and whatever. Also, people need to if they're ever near Darlington because to go into the NMPA Hall of Fame oh, is there. Man. Yeah, yeah. I never made it down there to that. I I might have to load up one day and go back. Well, well, just go down I, there and I, check it out. I'm ashamed to say I've never been in the end. Of, I've been in it like 15, 20 years ago, but my name's quite a bit in that place. We there. Oh, uh, Ham, just just the, uh, Ham, we got to load up and go see. We might yeah. have to do that. We yes. might have to get his it's, autograph. Now, was that near the, uh, when I was a kid, we went to the uh, Joe Weatherly Museum there. It was on the on old the front. front stretch Yeah, there. the old yeah, front stretch. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And we probably renamed it, probably yeah. sponsored it, you know, yeah. National oh. Motorsports Press Association, there you go. NMPA. Just yeah. forget about Joe Weatherly, I guess, you uh, know. See, yeah. I mean, he gave his life for racing, but yeah. forget it. Exactly. Who? Who? Yes. Who? I know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you, Corey, for coming out. Absolutely. Enjoy and, it. Yeah. And um, thanks for bringing them out here tonight. Yeah, thank you, watch. Allison. Thanks for bringing, you know. Yeah, thanks so much for coming, Allison. <laughs> it's very nice to meet you, even though she does look familiar. Yeah. But, you know. 
I'm sure she came to the racetrack a few times, but she was uh, yeah. doing that mother job yeah. and the father job, yes. raising my children, right. because, you know, yeah. we lived at the race shop or the racetrack. How many kids do you have so, now? Two. I two. actually have four grandchildren oh, now. Oh, nice. say I've got twin mm-hmm. boys that are going to be nine. What's that like? Oh, I love it. Grandkids. I love it. Yeah. My That's son. when I officially pulled my head off the pillow and said, I'm done racing. Sure. You know? yeah. It's yeah, my sure. son's. 31st birthday today. He's got a beautiful oh. girlfriend I met in April, and I'm just like, oh, I you want wait. grandkids, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Everybody will try to tell you, but it'll be like, nah, until you do it, yeah, it's life-changing. I'm waiting. Really yeah, I'm not shy about it. I'm yeah, we got two two boys and two girls. We just uh, have a three-year-old and a three-month-old. Well, nearly three. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, it's good pictures, times. pictures, especially with your mom. That's five generations you have here. Yeah. Let's do a picture, sure photo family. There photo you go. There for me, freebie. Absolutely. Yeah, all right. So uh, thanks again for coming in and y'all for tuning in on uh, – Ham I am on YouTube and tell your friends about us. We have, we're on here every Monday evening at seven o'clock and next Monday we're going to have, I believe I'm going to do a video conference, video call with Sterling Marlin. So I'm shooting to do that next week. So we'll see how that goes. But, uh, Corey, you take care, buddy. All and right, man. You great, come back and see, see us. you guys. Yeah. Great to see you too. Absolutely. Come back, see us anytime. We'll do it. Um, come back next Monday if you want. But anyway, I hear you. Uh, y'all have a good week. And we'll <laughs> see right, you man. next Monday. Thanks. Thanks. Blue Harbor Bank is not your typical bank, right, Doug Hendricks? It's a great little bank. We're based out of Mooresville. All of our board of directors, our employees, and the vast majority of our customers are all from right here in Iredale County. So it's a great place to be. We have a great time as a team. The team here in Statesville consists of Jennifer Jolly and Tara Summers. They are the 